First wave feminism, I'm gonna to try to go as quickly, quickly as I can so we just get a broad overview. So first wave feminism, early feminis feminists worked very closely with abolitionists for a very long time because we saw, we people of America, that both groups needed access to similar conversations and both groups needed access to rhetorical education. And so people who came for money women who came from money and who lived in houses with more money often had better access because and this is republican motherhood it's literally a theory called republican motherhood women's job was to educate their sons until their sons could go away to boarding school and so that kindergarten through approximately middle school age women in the home were responsible if it was hiring tutors i mean that's fine they had to know that the tutor knew what they were talking about and they had to know that the tutors were covering the right topics which meant they had to know the topics so so in a lot of cases that meant that women had to be educated especially in rhetorical theory so then we see a split between the abolitionists and the feminists because both just needed access to power and so to a huge extent yeah there are a lot of critiques and they're very very valid critiques that first wave feminists first wave feminism became racist yeah 100 percent it absolutely did because everybody was trying to get a little bit more. And when you're trying to get a little bit more, people feel like they're losing. And so then you end up with infighting because of that. And so that's definitely what we saw with first wave feminism. But the real focus here was over personhood. At the time, women were not considered people. They didn't have the right to vote. They did not have any legal rights. Women could not get a credit card until the 1960s. Women could not sign, um, deeds on houses until the 1960s like sure there were some other laws that women could come into some property and come into some money but not on their own not without all these other signatures not without all of this willing and deeding to get it over to women and not without conservators so if a woman was in an abusive relationship and she wanted to divorce her husband he was allowed to beat her because she was property if she wanted to divorce him she lost her children she lost everything we also saw a lot of, and the book does not cover this at all, so fun fact, we saw a lot of extremism with first wave feminism. So what we, what we see, and this is also totally random fun fact, this is about the time where, so we're getting post 19th amendment um, into, you know, like World War One and World War II, we see the start of comic books and Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman, the creator, he, had a wife who was an ardent feminist and he had i don't know he was in, he was in a throuple so his other wife um is a distant relative of the founder of planned parenthood so all sorts of fun facts but even planned parenthood you know and we're not talking about your fields on that but the creator of planned parenthood broke off from her sister in their beliefs because her sister was really extreme with starvation tactics and so a lot of women at this time to gain access and to get notoriety and to draw attention to the public arguments that they were making fasted there was a lot of force feeding that was then happening because the women were in jail and they were imprisoned for fasting too much and kids were taken away because of that. And so then bad mother tropes started as a way to try to discipline women back into doing what they were supposed to do. So there was an extensive amount of extremism that was not really captured. And we can talk a lot about how those were rhetorical choices and they were rhetorical media choices, which we saw very successfully in civil rights in the 1960s. They were not as successful during the, the arguments for the 19th amendment. Um, so yes, there's some extremism too. The goal with first wave feminism really is the right to vote, which then women thought once we can vote, we will have power to get and gain access to equal rights with citizenship, which was the you know underlying goal of the right to vote.